All right then, sports fans. Quick video. Aim of it is basically just to get across the fundamentals of how to place trad climbing gear. So how to place nuts, how to place cams, and just decide whether they're good or not, whether you should be trusting them or not. Simple. Um, with that information, you will then be able to place gear with confidence while you're leading and obviously place gear in belays as well and just know that it's good and know that it's worth trusting your life to and your climbing partner's life to. Whoa, scary stuff. <laughs> but really, it's pretty easy, isn't it? To start with, I thought I'd just mention generally how I rack the nuts on my harness to go climbing. So everyone's got their own system for this, but what I like to do is have three carabiners with small, medium and large. And basically the small ones are kind of smaller than my fingers. Medium ones are about finger size and the big ones are bigger than my fingers. And that just means when I'm climbing, I can hopefully quite quickly reach for the correct size set of nuts. So small ones for me, that's like one to four. So I've got two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours, and an offset four on there. Two fives, two sixes, two sevens. And again, they've got the offset five and six on there. So medium ones in the middle and then big ones at the back. So I've got two eights, two nines, and then I actually only bother carrying 110 and 111 normally. But that will change depending on uh, how hard or easy the route might be. But that's pretty standard for sort of VS through to kind of E4 or something like that for me. So they sit on the right. Also, I'm going to carry a selection of cams with me. Um, so these, I'm just going to store them on the left-hand side of my harness. And a bit like with the nuts, I have small ones at the front and bigger ones towards the back. And that just means they're kind of easy, easy to grab as I'm climbing. I know where they're going to be. So as I'm racking up to do a pitch, I'll actually obviously have a look at the climb and think about what gear I'm going to need. So if there are really wide looking placements on it, I'll take some big kit. And if it's really thin cracks, I'll be taking lots of these small ones or really small ones. But just for now, that'll do. I can just have that on my harness. All right, okay, so we're going to talk about placing gear into the rock um, there's not all that much to it really it's not that complicated but it is something that you kind of have to get right and it's nice to have a little system in your head for actually deciding whether you're going to trust a piece of kit or not um, so we'll just go through the basics of that so the scenario here is I'm, I'm on lead and I'm climbing up um, looking for places that I can put gear in on the way up before I bother taking any equipment off the side of my harness is I want to identify a kind of crack, a feature where I might be able to place some gear. Um, so that could be a parallel sided crack that might be good for a cam or that might be a constriction in the rock in, a, in the crack or in a pocket where I might be able to fiddle in a nut. Um, but before I take anything off my harness, I need to decide whether that rock is actually solid or not. Because there's no point placing a bit of kit and then deciding that actually the rock next to it um, isn't that solid and it's going to probably break off if you fall on it. So. You can save yourself lots of time by ensuring the rock quality before you start messing around. So in here we've got, I'm just going to test the rock here. It feels really solid and we've got a fairly parallel sided crack in there. So I'm thinking I might be able to um, get a cam in there. So I just roughly want to have a look at how wide it is and then just take the cam off my harness that I think, I suspect is going to be the right size for it. So you can place cams horizontally like that or vertically into the crack. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fine to do both. And here, obviously, we've got a bit of a diagonal, so I want it to be somewhere between kind of a third and three quarters cammed, if you like. Uh, someone described this once to me as looking a bit like angel wings. So if you imagine a kind of real crude kid's drawing of an angel set of wings, that doesn't really look like angel wings. Somewhere in the middle there is kind of nice little Christmas card angel wings. And again, that is too cammed, so that's just going to be stuck and that doesn't look like an angel anymore. So somewhere between kind of there and there. So you've actually got quite a big variety of different size cracks that this cam will fit into. So when I've finished placing it, I want it to be within that range somewhere, if that makes sense. 
So I want to have a pretty good idea of where the cam's going to go before I start randomly like stabbing at the crack. As I place the cam, I'm going to squeeze it closed a little bit, put it exactly where I think it's going to be, and then let it open up. So that's a really good cam placement. So as I place it, I want to be considering the direction of pull. So if I do fall off on this cam, where's that pull going to come from? So you want to have the stem facing towards where that direction of force will be. Would you? I would hang on that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd hang my ground off that one. Obviously a bigger cam. I can place that in there. And one nice thing about this placement is people often talk about cams walking in cracks, which is this idea that when you place it and move past it, the cam can kind of, if there's any movement from the rope, the cam can walk like that. So with this one, I can actually place the cam right up at the top there, so there's no way it can move any further. It can't do any more walking. So that's a nice little feature of this placement. That's pretty good, but what's quite often worth doing if it's not sitting nicely is just to try twisting it around and placing it the other way. Because obviously we've got, it's got quite different surface contact with the rock because of the spacing of the lobes. So sometimes, for whatever reason, it'll fit better one way rather than the other. And you'll be like, oh yeah, that's the one. And um, just inspire that little bit more confidence. This crack again, it disappears quite a long way in. It's pretty deep. So I'm a little bit worried about as I climb past this, it might work its way deeper into the crack, walk in and disappear. So what I could do then is just extend it. So pull that sling so it's a little bit longer. And if that wasn't enough extension, I could then put a quick draw on there as well. Even longer, extend that out. And then this is just a really long, flexible quick draw now. So hopefully that'll mean that my climbing rope as I go past isn't gonna be affecting the cam placement at all. It's not gonna be moving it. Um, and when I come to take these out, or when my second comes to remove this cam now, all they need to do is pull on that carabiner to set that back nice and neat, take the cam out, and they can keep climbing. Happy days. <laughs> so hopefully that's enough of an introduction to how to place cams. If they're in and they're good, the thing is to just trust them and keep climbing, you know, but it takes a really long time to build up that confidence with them. And partly that's because often we place them, but they never actually get tested, you know. So it does take years and years of climbing before you really feel comfortable with cams and the same thing with nuts, you know. Um, yeah, it's a tricky thing. One little technique is to share information with your climbing partner about how good you think the kit is. So if you just use a real simple grading system, like give the cam a score from one to five, one's really rubbish, five is really, really good. Uh, and then that just gives you something to hang the conversation on. So if, if I think it's a five, but you think it's a two, then why is that? Uh, and it gives you a kind of way of talking about the gear placement. So here, there's a little section here where it's going from kind of wide to narrow and it's about finger size. So I think I should be able to get one of my smaller nuts into there. Before I even bother taking them off though, I want to decide whether I think the rock is good. So if the rock's loose, you'll usually get a different tone off it. So that bit's maybe a bit dodgy. But anyway, up here, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to choose the nut that I think might fit best. And I'm not just throwing it in at random, I'm going to really precisely try and put it where I think it's going to sit nicely. And that's it, basically. If it wasn't sitting well, I could give it a couple of little tugs. But that's a good nut placement. I'm happy with that. I would use that as a runner on a pitch, no worries. What I want is lots of surface contact with the rock. So on here you can see that's just sort of moulded in there nicely. It's always often worth trying spinning the nut around to see if it sits any better. That's a bit worse, you can see it moving there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, 
I'm putting it in considering the direction of load that I'm anticipating. So if I'm climbing past this and fall off, the load is going to go the dunk like that. So that should work for me pretty nicely. Um, this is a size four. I could try a size five in here. So that's the next one up. Okay. So that, again, that's not a bad placement, but we can see here there's a little bit of air where the metal's not touching the rock. So it's not quite as deep. It's a bigger nut, but the seating isn't quite as perfect. So in general, bigger is better as long as it's a good placement. But the flip side of that is I would always choose the one that is just sitting the most nicely, if, even if that means it's the next size down or a bit smaller. Other thing to remember is you can place these sideways like that. So if the, if the crack was a bit wider, you could put it in that way. There's no problem with that. That way, that way, sideways, horizontal and cracked like that, no problem. As long as, you, as long as it's in good rock, you've got good surface contact and the direction of pull is gonna work for that placement. Those are the things you wanna be worried about. Lovely. So I've, I've placed that runner fairly high, which is good, because as I climb past it, it's gonna be useful for that much longer. But as I go past it, I'm gonna look down on it and make sure it's as good as I think it is. Sometimes that change of angle just gives you a bit more information. Maybe it's not sitting as well as you first thought. So that's another little tip. And again, where's my rope going to run as I go? Where's it coming from up below me and where's it going to go as I keep climbing? And if I'm changing the angle of the rope significantly or there's a little overhang here, uh, I might extend this quick draw just to make that nice loose hinge on the gear so that the rope's not going to be pulling on it and that should reduce the the drag on my rope yeah so yeah so that size five maybe isn't quite as good as the size four in that placement um yeah i was climbing with my mate mike in devon once and he was like halfway up a pitch he was so tired and scared that he just got the whole set of nuts and went like that and clipped into it and he was like hold me and just sat on them and uh, yes, one of them held, there was like two or three of them. Well, that's all right, actually. But he just went like that, threw them in. Not a recommended, <laughs> not a recommended technique. Should be a bit more composed, ideally. Don't get out of home, kids. <laughs> it's pretty good though, I was amazed they held. <laughs> So just on the way down, I was just thinking that a really good way of practicing those skills of placing nuts and placing cams is to do it, go out climbing with someone who you really trust, who's really experienced, and they can give you feedback on the gear that you're putting in without you actually having to be on the sharp end and lead routes and build belays. Um, another little thing you can do is just walk around at the bottom of a cliff and practice putting in kit and, and then go around with your mate and take it out again and talk about whether it was any good or not. And, maybe place it again and try and make it better. So there's loads of ways that you can practice placing gear without actually putting yourself into risky situations. Top tips, be safe everybody. Danger never sleeps.